Morpho that we've not seen very much of. Uh, the Morpho you now grabbed on Wildcard. Yeah, been. been a little bit here and there, but uh, these last few days haven't really caught too much of it. It makes sense, though. Into the Visage, it's fantastic Ten pick. Uh, should be able to farm the lane pretty easily. Um, the thing about the wild card draft here is it's a little bit reminiscent of what we saw yesterday from Five Rat Four Staff, right? Great where they tried to go for this Pangolier Ricky combo, but the difference here is Pango is usually picked on eight, right, at the very end of phase one, and mm -hmm. that would give them the ability to protect Ban out for the Pangolier, which didn't quite happen this time. So they get the Ember Spirit matchup, which is severely favored for the Ember Spirit. So. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit curious as if it's going to work as well with the Ricky Pango, but... Ten seconds. Just mm -hmm. And they very clearly tried to protect the Pango afterwards. I mean, you see the ban of the Bloodseeker. The Nature's Prophet is very good against the Pango once you do hit level 20 and you have that yep. Sprout Leash talent. Uh, and Dame seem to be going along enough that Nature's Prophet almost always gets to that uh, talent now. The only time we didn't see a game go that long was when, in fact, we saw Dreamers play yesterday, and they kind of fumbled, you know? Uh, we have a. You guys have a term there in America where you fumble the football. Uh, like, you know, it's called a fumble. Radio That's what they did. Time. I see. Mm -hmm. Good call. Good call. Thank uh, you. I've uh, been engrossing myself in American culture after I visited Philadelphia. Mm. Unlucky. There's not a lot of it, really. There's not much American. There's culture. some interesting things that happen in that city, though. Like uh, apparently, people celebrate after the games by climbing the. The, the light poles, poles there, yeah, yeah. And so the police grease them up so they can't climb them, but then the people try to climb them anyways. Yep, it's it a was dumb... a sight to behold. You guys have a beautiful country. Oh, mm -mm. it's really stupid. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, they ban out the Tinker. Last ban will be the Troll Warlord, as Dreamers do need their one position. We'll be seeing that here in just a second. Um, Wildcard have overall last pick though, and can flex mid. They can pick an off lane as well. Five seconds. Do you Four, think it's going to be three, a mid-pango into the Ember Spirit at this point, and they'll just, like, deal with the bad lane? Or uh, are they just uh, waiting to see be. what Dreamers pick it, at this point? It's got to be. I don't imagine they're going to play when you're off lane. Though, historically, they've been last picking whatever Babbage wants to play in the mid lane. Like, we usually see his hero grabbed last, now that I think about it. But I imagine this will be a mid-pango. You want something that can be an initiator uh, on your side. I do like the fact that they banned out um, the Tinker, though. I mean, we've seen a couple of times just, uh, like, the bots, too, coming on, on uh, line up with the Ricky. Like, a Sleeping Dart will come out, and then immediately the mid laner would TP in and just find solo pickoff potential. Yeah. That's something that Tinker would have allowed them to do. So I'm glad that they did get rid of that one. That's a safe lane OD for Adrian. And this hero has looked pretty dang strong. It absolutely crushes Morphling and Ricky. They, do not, they don't stand a chance against this hero. Now, wild card, I feel like they need to pick something that actually shuts down the OD's progression in the lane. I, I don't think a Pango will be good enough. So I think you have to pick a strong offlaner here that can deal with OD. I'm just not entirely sure what that is. You could try and do something like a Timber Saw, but you need tower push. You need tower damage here if you're up against a Tram Protector. Oh, God, I look tired. I'm the glasses on, pretend I'm not tired. Uh, yeah, you definitely need uh, something to protect it a little bit better i don't know i feel like you need to like some sort of dangler here on wild card ricky i mean maybe i you, i think you need tower damage after this last hero and it has to beat od in lane you don't think that morphling is enough tower damage no you oh well, i mean one he's of the gonna best be farming for so long towers in the the thing, game. right you need something uh, earlier maybe you can go lycan here mm. lycan versus od just feels so bad though still yeah, it does. Like, he just Never astrals you and then presses R and you die under to zero. To oh, my God. oh, my God. What a call, dude. Let's go. Look at you uh, patting yourself on the back. First game of the day, baby. I mean, All it's right. the only thing that made sense to me. I was like, you have to have an offlaner here that pushes tempo real fast. Because otherwise, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. Well, we'll let them get some towers early on. Uh, I'm concerned about how well it's going to perform against the OD. So it is going to be Vavitich playing uh, the Pango in the mid lane, like we discussed. Uh, everything else is kind of up in the air. But uh, Sammy's on the Morphling. I'm, I'm sorry, what did you just say? Sammy oh, is on the Morphling. Oh, they have a stand-in. Yep. Where's Admin Badger? Who Why the hell he ever is this guy? Us? Yeah, what the... What? Oh, I'm messaging the Admin right now. 
Badger, you are on thin ice, buddy. Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. Hmm. Okay. Well, Sammy's gonna be playing one position, so that is interesting. I mean, it makes sense that they would go for the Morphling here as well, since that is one of the heroes that he is very comfortable in playing. Um, mm -hmm. And since he has been playing a ton of carry, going back to your comfort zone is probably not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it was distracted by yelling at the admin for not telling us uh, who's standing in for wildcard this match. If he messaged you again, again, thin ice. All right. We're into it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, it's at a pretty good time. Welcome. No, it's not. Okay. Well, <laughs> it was for a moment there. Uh, welcome like to the BTS Pro Series, now. everyone, as we uh, open with a pause. Nothing quite like that. Neff, take it away. Yeah. Uh, what up, everyone? It's your boy, Neff, here. Coming at you with Season 14 of the BTS Pro Series. And uh, I'm going to be solo casting. We're kicking Ricky off. We're kicking Badger off. No more admins as they're not informing us of who's standing in. That's that. Now, uh, let me tell you that uh, little story, everyone. Uh, Sammy originally playing position five for wildcard. You know, had Yamson on his team. This season, wildcard ended up selling their slot under the ownership of Devai Lama to bait who played in North American DPC this season. And then Divai Lama bought a Div 2 slot in Europe with that money, so he was able to play there. Uh, with they D2 were supposed Hustlers. to play together. Yes, D2 Hustlers. They were supposed to play together this season, Sammy and uh, Divai. But in the end, Sammy wanted to switch to position one. Divai wanted to bring in some other people as the pause one instead. And Sammy said, there is no way I'm playing support right, for four Europeans. I'd rather just play in North America. I'd rather not play on the team at all. So that is exactly what ended up happening. Sammy didn't play on the team at all, but he ended up playing on another team in position five for three Europeans along with Flea uh, and managed to buy the slot from KBU US, which is now in the ownership of Wildcard Gaming. So that's where we ended up where we are now. But Sammy, again, has been wanting to play position one again after taking a break from pause one on four Zoomers, uh, where he played pause five and was the captain of Wildcard Gaming. It seems like now he's the captain and pause one again on wildcard. At least for the moment, like it's hard to say if like Ark is off the team for good or not. Like I, I don't quite know, but um, I know he's like okay, no, practiced no. position one in like pubs and stuff, but I don't know if, you know, he's still planning on playing it competitively if he wants to continue playing position one or not. But we'll find out. It is going to be Flea playing the Ricky, and I do have to. Uh, I do have to just pull this up on stream right here. Can someone send Flea some cosmetics? Because this has to be the worst skin I have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Ricky was one of the few heroes in Dota that tricked, like, consistently had the worst sets in the entire game. It's really bad. Until very recently, and now he has some of the best sets in the game. But it was a long, it was a long dry spell, you know. Just, I didn't realize you were an anti-masker, Ricky. Okay. Is that what you don't like about this? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just right like that. Get huh? a load of this nut job over oh, here, am I right, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is awkward. Man, Babbitage trying to get his D ward in the mid lane, but five, just, just not letting him do it. Mm -hmm. All right, they're looking for Drakeel here on the Visage. Bushwhack will come through. Flea is here as well. Blink Strike's gonna do a lot of damage. This Visage, it's negative armor, but the Ricky just dies <laughs> instantly. Uh, take the mask you know, didn't do anything. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Nice try, Ned. Nice one. <laughs> Not a good joke. Not a good well, joke. I'll try it's some other material. Dude, he just got owned. That that Ricky died so damn fast. He so, did. So, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, despite having great armor, you have almost no HP. 
And that does not do well against a double soul assumption, uh, assumption and avalanche. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, God, just absolutely melt. Soul assumption is still a crazy ability, but you do burn through a lot of mana using it. So we can already see Drakeel doesn't have enough for one. Needs to like eat up two mangoes. He wants to throw out like another two uh, soul assumptions here. He is sending himself out to uh, Tangos as well, so he could be able to trade with these heroes, but I'm not sure they're going to actually be able to burst down the Morphling here. Um, the damage does come out a little bit slowly in just the multiple instances of stun that come from Avalanche. It means that he's always going to be able to get off Attribute Shift, but fully will have to be a little bit careful. Yeah. I'm really curious how this Lycan's going to do top. Like, this is like a pretty sick... Pretty sick game. Courier has lost its brave battle with a bunch of swords and fireballs. But we'll see. I, I mean, up against the... Up against the OD, it's just so rough, man. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the OD... I mean, it's okay in the laning phase. You've got multiple units to work with. So you're going to be able to secure yourself last hits. It's just after. Um, like, obviously, the OD can't banish you and all of your units, but even just banishing you when you're in your ultimate is, like, a four-second disable. It'd be very easy to run away from the Lycan all of a sudden, especially once he gets uh, multiple charges of it with the Aghanim Scepter. Do you imagine he'll go in early eggs this game, or do you think he'll wait until you know, one of his later items? On the OD? Yeah. He... I, I'm I'm going to guess he just goes Treads Midas Ags, 100%. It's uh, it's way too strong how good that it, that build is. So I would guess Treads Midas Ags. Or Midas Treads Ags, one or the other. I mean, it does let you just farm creep waves pretty fast because it becomes an AoE uh, damage ability as well, again, at that point. Gives you the save mechanic as well for the Ricky, which is always also, also oh really nice. God, look at what... What? J1 is doing to, to Babbage in the mid lane. This is oh, yeah. gross. It's... This is why I was wondering if they were going to pick a different mid lane, mid lane hero and put the Pango off lane, because this lane is really bad. It also yeah. didn't help that he got an earlier level 2 thanks to the first blood, and he completely zoned Pango off the lane. Mm -hmm. Well, he's doing uh, absolutely amazing right now. And again, we're just going to see Slide of Fist maxed out. Yep. He's got to put the level 4 point into Searing Chains, though. This is just like necessary for being able to chase people down. He actually might not get it until like level 7, to be honest. But... Well, he would have dropped a point into Flame Guard here if he was planning on putting the other point. Do it. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I imagine he goes for the Searing Chains. I, I mean, at the, in this matchup, so I feel like only a single point in Flame Guard is probably enough. Doesn't the shield break at uh, level two shield crash? It does. Yeah, it does. It just needs to level go one Flame Guard damage. blocks 100, 121. 121? I thought it was 105. Yeah. No. That's okay. You're North American, you don't know how to do math. I don't remember. They made it 121 specifically so it would block uh, Remnants from Storm Spirit. Like remember that? Yeah, I knew it was like slightly more, I just didn't know where the cutoff was. Well, I mean, he's recovered a little bit now. Uh, the ratio of ZS between these two isn't as bad, but he's still like 10 up on him. Yeah, these uh, lanes are super boring. Like no one's, no one, no fighting, just a lot of farming. Bottom lane, maybe they're going to make a play here on the Drakeel. They do have a lot of physical damage and whew, down to 50 HP will end up surviving. So there we go. I just had to call them out on it, you know? Yeah. Come on, guys. Give us some action, all right? The people want to be entertained. We started two hours later than we were expecting today. You can at least put on a little bit of a show, am I right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Jabari is trying to do that for us. He's just spamming Slate of Fist on Babbage off of cooldown in the mid lane. And unfortunately, no one's been able to TP in and refill Babbage's bottle. So. Man is slowly ticking down. This gets so annoying to play against after a little while. Because yeah. there's just nothing that you can do against it. Yeah. Well, what he can do is he can walk back. It looks like he's going to walk all the way back into base. He doesn't want to let him, his HP drop any lower, and he wants to be able to contest the uh, six-minute power runes. That's so. exactly it. Yeah. Now that his supports are going to be dying or, like, ro like teeping mid to refill his bottle. So, mm. well, I say that. I don't even know who Vel is, so I'm just going to say Vel. 
Uh, he's from a team called Level Up. No idea what region that is. It's not... Not an important one, I can tell you that. Oh, get a little bit too based here today, Ricky. Uh, solo kill by Flea, though. That is shocking. I, I mean, I guess it gets a tiny. He doesn't have boots, and he has an orb of venom, so he's able to just run him down, maybe. That's pretty good. <laughs> but nope. top lane, into the trees. You can't get away on the hoodwink. Super close. Nicely done. We'll be able to survive. Bushwhack will come through. So I'm not going to turn around onto the tree and protect her now. As he does have the wolves with the body blocks. Well played. He gets the kill. Nicely done. But <laughs> he yeah. just dies to the nature's grass. Can he body block Adrian with the wolves? Is the question. Uh, the, the answer nature's is grass. no. Too much slow. Yeah, he's, he's running just, around in it. He's taking so much he damage from this. They're both dead. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> that was level two nature's grasp in the trees. I think he was doing 60 DPS. Uh, I gotta pull up this death. So how much damage you take? It's from all the pro. Right? It's <laughs> all the nature he, er, tree. He took 264 damage from the nature's grasp there. Yeah. He was just walking around in it. <laughs> And uh, J. Mari, of course, was the one who got the power rune. I think it was a haste as he just zoomed top right there. Yeah, that was a haste. Uh, also, fun zone. fact, Sammy died bottom lane here on the Morphling during all that. How? Uh, I don't know. Just from the uh, from Tiny. I how. didn't think that he would, but he's gone full edgy, probably. Yeah, had to get, like, he probably got Avatar Soul Assumptions and just, like, 100 to 0. Lacking goes down top, another rotation from the Ember. The Pango is going to TP on in. He does have a Remnant. He's trying to bait him out, get him to use it, but I end up fortifying here in the Tier 1 towers. They want to try and get as much damage in with this Catapult. Will finally go down, but overall, good moves from Dreamer so far. This Ember's having a great game, as expected. I don't know. I don't believe in them anymore. After what I watched yesterday, I, I'm a Dreamer's hater. A non-dreamer, if you would. You're a... I used to be a fighting dreamer. Oh my god. You are the worst. <laughs> you are the absolute worst. I need a new caster, uh... man. I can't believe this. <laughs> Vel hiding in the Ooh. trees. Nice dodge there. That was, that was yeah. slick. He takes a lot of hits uh, there. That bushwhack's gonna him. cancel that TP. I... He only has he doesn't one have mana to go on him. Oh, he misses! <laughs> he just got no mana! He actually missed the auto attack as well. Like yeah. Oh, he's down. sitting beside the trees. He had the 15% evasion from Scurry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He popped the Scurry. Yeah, it was yeah, close yeah. enough to the tree. Yeah. Man, that 15%. That Sam yeah. with a DD rune mid lane trying to get some damage into this tier 1 tower. Flea is nearby as well, but I'm not sure if he can do a whole lot. I mean... That Ember spent a lot of time just now out of this mid lane, and then it's costing him quite a bit. Sammy is doing his best. Except to he just out. TP back top. And he's now onto Sunlight. There is going to be another Astral to try and buy them some space, but a Bushwhack as well in Sunlight now, just trying to disengage. Slide of Fist from J. Mari. Four point Slide of Fist coming off cooldown here in just a second. Is it going to be enough? It's still not. A bushwhack in two, in one. Dude, Can if he they dies turn around, again dude? here, his game is just... He's oh, the slight fist and missed. Leave. Oh, no. He's he's dead. He's oh, actually no. dead. He missed the slide of fist onto Sunlight. Two deaths in a row for Jay Mari. It just keeps happening. Dude, he was top net worth by over a thousand of this uh, Pango. Uh, Sammy does get the morph just barely. Whew. Very close. So he's going to know about that ward eventually. My waters rise. This is a disaster. Yes, just go I, This to is why he's I'm not so a dreamer, right man. Now. This is why I'm not a dreamer. I mean, I've seen this, I've seen this story too many times. He just wasn't able to be cool, calm and collected. Radiance Middle Death Tower is hanging to my arrest. Hmm.
Looks like Dyer's top okay, top so as we get close to the 15 minute mark, uh, things get easier for wildcard again. You mentioned this yesterday, Ricky's entire timing when he's playing pause four is just based around whether he has sleeping dart or not. Yeah, uh, but it's not just things... a sleeping dart because you need an allied hero to play with, which in the most recent games has been this Pangolier who's dropping that rolling thunder top and they will find a kill onto adrian that's huge this guy didn't rush the midas he went for the treads first this is going to slow him down quite a bit and sunlight's going to be able to get the tower here with the catapult and that's the whole plan with this last pick lichen right you gotta start taking towers early against this train yeah. protector yeah you did mention that, like this is why you thought they would go for this because if they don't get enough of the map and they have this morphling, their team just controls nothing and becomes too easy for dreamers to pull ahead. It's just um, such an easy OD game, otherwise, right? Like if OD is just allowed to free farm this lane and never get pushed out, he's gonna have a Midas. He'll have a decently timed Ags, and he will just w literally late game press R, and it will kill Ricky and Morphling. Ricky, I think, has close to like 800 mana at level 30. With no with no mana items, another kill top actually for sunlight five. Doing some work as they look for dude. Adrian's gonna die back to back. Oh my god! Yeah, they're just tanking deaths back to back, and all these heroes who were relatively far before. I mean, he dropped the astral there to try and get the lichen, but he just barely survived. Or not the Astral, yeah. the uh, the Sanity's Eclipse, but it's only two points in the Astral. Over in the mid lane, Babbage is just faking out the Rolling Thunder as he waits for the power to spawn, but... J1 is grabbing it. Flea is getting so much space on the Ricky right now as well. Like, he's just chilling bottom. He's having a great time. He's easily going to hit the Shard by 15. Well, unless he dies to Drakeel, who has a dust now, so it's very possible. Hmm. Actually, just kind of surprised he's not... He didn't just run to the lane and drop the dust, but... Oh, 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 that's awkward. Negative. Oh, a little bit of a pause hmm. there. Some lag out for the hoodwink. Yeah, I'm sure they'll fix it soon. No, Visage is currently going for uh, drums after finishing the Vlads, and... Like you mentioned, um, we'd never see the Wraith Pact totem anymore, right? That item is pretty dead. I mean, it just reduces the auto attack damage now, right? Yeah, it's just it's just physical damage. Yeah, um, because before you just build it against like most teams, especially like uh, spellcasters. Actually, just any team because every team has uh, spellcasters. But people who sit super far back and spam spells usually aren't the people who are able to right click. Uh, the Wraith Pack Totem. With how it is right now, it's like, okay, it reduces right-click damage, but right-clickers are usually just, like, far into the team fight and have a very easy time connecting with it to take it out. It's all and physical damage, actually, so it's not yeah. just uh, right-clicks. Any sort of physical mm -hmm. spells and stuff like that are also reduced, but yeah, it's... I think part of it was just the fact that uh, Pipe and Guardian Greaves are, are super valuable right now, so we're just seeing less Wraith Packs, and then the fact that, you know, you can go for um other forms of physical damage reduction like crimson guard or just building more armor items like lotus oil and shivas and stuff like that so yeah i mean the thing about the wraith pack was it was so good just by itself and what it gave you like it didn't even even when you didn't factor in what the vlads gave you it was really good so a lot yeah. of people are kind of missing the life steal in the armor and the mana region they got from the vlads it gave a lot of lifesteal. This is something that a lot of people forgot like this item gave 24 aoe lifesteal and that's stacked with the fact that a lot of carries would build like Mask of Madness or Satanic late game. <laughs> so, yeah. and if they get like Paladin Sword or Assange based item, like it, they were they were just casually getting like almost 40 to 50 uh, percent lifesteal in late game, yeah, which means was almost pretty nice. Any team could take Roshan as well because they just always had a Wraith Factor on them. They always had lifesteal between all their heroes. Like, yeah. It made Dota super easy. Yeah. Do you know it's not super easy? What's that? Getting a patch out, apparently. <laughs> Dude, I am the most excited for the patch that's going to be dropping. Uh, there's Okay, so there's a theory, right? There's a theory that the patch is dropping tomorrow. You know? That's, Whose that's, theory was that? 
I mean, that's that's the that's the prevailing theory from a lot of the Dota communities that the patch will drop tomorrow since it is the Tuesday and still plenty of time before the major. I think at this point we're too close to the major to probably drop it, but and we're back. Um, if you're I think what we're likely going to see power, is a what what what, what patch are we on right now? D or E? Behold, a uh, we're on. I don't even fucking know. Anymore. Yeah, I think we're on like patch D or E or something, and we're gonna get like the F patch, uh, which is like slight balances to like 10, 15 heroes and like maybe a we're couple items. What is it? Run D. Yeah, so we're gonna get the E patch I think tomorrow, which will give us like slight modifications to a couple heroes, a couple items, and that's it. We're not gonna see any like anything new, like uh, the leaked items and stuff like that. All that's coming up like post major with the Muerta update. That's my theory. Dude, seven point, seven point three two. Was oh, I'll get back to that in a second. Oh yeah, I mean they've got ooh off the mark mm. with the sense star stun there. They do manage to get the grab onto the visage. Either way though, he will tank the sharpshooter. It's quite nice, but still a lot of damage coming through from this lichen. Mm -hmm. All right. Does, so does force the shapeshift though? That is a kind of a mistake there from Sunlight. Is he? Oh, wait, is it though? Because he's found Adrian, and with the help of Flea, they might be able to kill him. Tricks of the Trade is available, but gets away with the pig mode, as well as the bonus armor providing from that uh, living armor, so he will be able to survive. Babatic. Ooh. He gets the bottled rune. No way. Uh oh. Ping pong. It's fine. It'll be fine. He's got to get out now. They jump in for more. Ricky tossed into the air. Brought down without any issues at all. Babatich does a swashbuckle in one up onto the enemy high ground. That is a... Uh, yeah, that's a rough one. He at least gets the bottle rune. Hmm. He's decent. Uh, it looks like... I mean, they're going to put some heavy damage into this tier 1 tower. I'm not sure they'll be able to finish it off. I mean, you do still have Ooh, Hoodwink here. Visage. He's he's dead. Oh, <laughs> oh no. man, what a pickoff by Vel. I mean, that's the thing, right? Visage is not a hero with a lot of armor, and it's just one point Gravekeeper's cloak. So, mm -hmm. as soon as you get through the gate, Gravekeeper's cloak, he just melts. Does it you know, die to, to um, Swash? Does Swash kill the Gravekeeper's cloak? That's like one of those things I don't remember. I believe so. If he receives damage from a player, one layer is removed. Minimum damage is 40. So I on like based on that, my my thought is yes. Yes. But uh, I know like that is a spell that has some weird interactions. <laughs> nice pick off there. It is the 15 minute mark. So Flea's got the shard coming out already. And has to unfortunately deny his ward. I'm surprised he didn't just drop a sentry on the backside there to not lose the ward. But who will? His fleet. He's gonna look for Adrian instead. There's the dart, and there's no follow-up. Okay, he just kind of revealed his ward. It's fine. Smoke up from the side of Dreamers though, as they want to try and get active. They're playing around this blink timing now from the tinies. He's managed to pick this one up. So easy setup for him. Flea will pop the smoke there onto the Ember Spirit. He does have that dart to try and set things up. Turns himself into the Ember. He's gonna kind of run away now. Into the Avalanche, but he dodges it with the waveform. It's only gonna catch Flea. Blink Strike, not in range. They will be able to bring down that Ricky once again. But it lo you cost- Ooh, they tossed Sammy back. Oh, they did. Nicely done. He's out of mana completely as well, but protected for the moment by the Flame Guard. Is it enough? Absolutely not. He will go down. Babatich rotating in, ends up missing with that uh, shield crash. Does cost you your mid tower, and Sunlight's gonna chase for more here onto the OD. The sharpshooter connects. The slow is gonna be enough. It just needs a couple more hits there from the wolves. So a pretty even exchange on the map, honestly. Yeah, safe lane for safe lane gets taken out, so it doesn't feel as bad, but you really don't like Warfling dying in the early game like that. Yeah. I mean, you get the mid tier one tower, though, right? That's the big thing for Sunlight. Mm hmm. And Babatich is off to a great start already. And uh, I think he's about to find another kill here as five gets caught just for a moment. Wow, he has the roll up already completed. Flea comes in, helps him secure that one. Yep. Looks like, yeah, you got it pretty quickly after the 15 minute mark, and it makes sense. You're playing against a Visage. You really don't want your roll, uh, your Rolling Thunder just to get interrupted constantly by the Visage Prince dropping. 
So the magic community that it provides you, allowing you to get that Rolling Thunder started, is really useful. Lots of jungle items coming out here as we hit the 17 minute mark. No. Good old money ball here for Flea. He's gonna be super happy. Ooh. Not as happy as Dyer are about landing that scan. They managed to predict the Roshan, so they're all gonna move over to the pit, right? I don't right? know if they can. I think they're gonna look for Sam Bottom, hoping he might be farming. I don't think they can contest. Hmm. Which is a little bit weird because you do have the OD, but he doesn't have his Aghanim Scepter. He's end up gonna go for he's gonna go for this Hurricane Pike first. I mean, you don't even get this tier two tower. You accomplished nothing while they did Roshan. Like you didn't push any of the lanes. You're you taking towers. Setting up? Is that enough? Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Setting up for what? I mean, they're setting up for bottom, right? They've got the ward high ground here. They have four heroes now in the bottom lane. They get the fort, but yeah, here comes Pango, and I feel like Pango can clear this so easily. Yeah, just like that. They pretty much get nothing at all. Yeah, Pango. And they're back to this. farming less of the map. You have home of the uh home of the helm of the Overlord now for the Lycan. This and you got the Black this is Dragon. Push so quickly. Yeah, you got the you got the Black Dragon now. So the best wave clearing creep in the game. Yeah. <laughs> it, it always makes me lose it. The, every other hero in the game, every other player will be like, "Yeah, yeah you want to fill up your inventory. Make sure you use your inventory so lots efficiently." And would you see a single item that's Lycan's inventory? That's how Lycan. Yeah, that's just what he does. It's really weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is unfortunately peak gaming performance here. A quelling blade and a helmet. He's ready to go. He's a barbarian, you know. He just got. He's got an axe in one hand, hand and a helmet on the other. Absolutely nothing else. He needs nothing. No shirt. No shirt. No pants. Hardly some underwear. It's fine. Sleeping Dark comes out bottom. They do manage to hold the OD into place, and Babatich with the roll up. Rolling Thunder instantly cancelled there by five. So nicely done by them. And that's. Searing Chains will catch on to the backside for the Ricky. He's just going to cut and run here on that Pangolier, but Sunlight's going to come in and start just doing the work. Nice bushwhack. Sunlight grabs his first to trade for the supports, but now he does have to leave. He is all alone. The question is, will he be able to chop it through the trees with a TP over from Adrian? He's got him with an Astral, and this should be a very easy kill. He'll drop the hammer, maybe? Doesn't need to. Okay. So they just lose three heroes like that. They were definitely on separate pages. Like the Pango like instantly turned around while the rest of the team was running in. <laughs> Sammy got tier two top, but that is Good. still a really good fight for Dreamers. They get back a lot of golden XP that they were missing. And somehow Ember is top net worth. After all of what happened earlier. Yeah, after what happened, the whole situation in the top lane. He's highest level, highest net worth. That's actually nuts to me. He's got a BKB Maelstrom done. He is um, now, he's got 26 Sabotage? charges. Roll up. They have to just, oh no. Oh, what a bushwhack. That is, that's gonna be enough to save him, I think. Never mind, he has a haste turn. <laughs> Goodbye, slide of fisted dogs, the shield crash there. That's gonna be the Aegis popped. Jay Mari, caught by a sleeping dart. A bushwhack does come through. The he's Rolling no Thunder connects as well. Oh no, he's gonna pop the BKB. He will be able to TP on home. So nicely done there. As Babasage will continue the roll, try and catch the Triumph Protector. There's gonna be an OD coming in from the side though. And he needs to be careful. Roll up once again to try and give him some space. The fact that the familiars don't hit roll up is actually really good for uh, Visage. Cause he just shreds him while he's in roll up. Yep. He does do a lot of damage. Dyer's scanning all over for enemies. We'll level the birds. Just level two right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Sam has just been left alone top, though. He almost has his Aghanim Scepter, which I'd have to guess is going to be an OD Ags, which will be quite funny. Bottom lane. They do manage to pick off one hero to grab the Hoodwing Sunlight. He's just running in there as support's coming for the rest of the team. Babatich has to get active, has the roll up, but they've got to get on top of the OD and. Ends up just running away. It's going to be Sam who runs in instead, pops him, but now he's got to find a way out of here. Manta is available. Babatich trying to mana up on the backside of the fight as he grabs himself a Centaur Conqueror. But in comes the Ember Spirit as well. No BKB available, but Remnants on forward anyway. 
Still has the Searing Chains, but the Creep's trying to interrupt it. Jumps up onto the high ground. Oh, he misses with the Rolling Thunder. Babatich probably just going to do what he can to keep Sammy alive. I don't think we're going to see any kills coming through, but Vel, he actually shows up now. And I think he's going to regret this one. And toss in. They instantly burst him down. Not it's squirrel season, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so they managed to bring big things back on Dreamers. Looking pretty dicey for them immediately after the uh, Roshan attempt from Wildcard, but looking good now. Like you mentioned, Ember Spirit is just near the top of the net worth. He's playing quite well despite that tilt up in the top lane. That's the only thing I can describe it as. Yeah, I'd have to imagine that's what it was. They're smoked up bottom. They just want to actually fight right away. They have no Rolling Thunder, though. And the Trant Protector pops the the smoke. They will just see him walk right under tower and be, uh, you know, not really the kill that you wanted. You would much prefer the Visage, but it is better than nothing. Hmm. Speaking of Visage, he has a gem now. Hmm. All right, I guess they feel like they control enough of the map that they can get away with having a gem on him that he's not going to die. He also has... Actually, no, he doesn't. I'm really curious what Sam's play is with the Axe. I'd have to imagine it's to just cast on the OD, so you get double Astrals, but also mm. it steals a lot of spell amp from that hero. You go into the negative territory, like he literally goes to he minus 20%, so his spells and that ult will I mean, just if you have that and damage. somebody managed to hit him with a, uh, like mage, a slayer, mage Slayer, then, then he's doing like a small fraction of what he normally does. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. I didn't really consider it, like, if you managed to get a Mage Slayer this game. But you Ags is done. On the pango. Yeah, you could, huh? He's going for a Blink Ags, though, but has a Lotus Orb done, so that's quite nice. Yeah. Uh, something else that kind of protects him from the OD. Also, there's a lot of single target spells again. The Astral Imprisonment, uh, it'll take uh, Overgrowth off of people, Soul Assumption, and uh, Grave Chill. Both counter back onto the Visage. Sentry dropped up onto the high ground. They're going to find the Tiny as the Swashbuckle comes in. He's got a Rolling Thunder. Uses it pretty much right away, and Tiny should get brought down here pretty easy. Unfortunate there for Sammy. He waveformed to the high ground. He cannot join his team. Drakeel in the mid lane. We'll be fine. They just have to wait this one down? out. Man. I mean, he's got a waveform. Yeah, you think that they would let him go, though. Because they just don't have force taps or anything. Okay. Well, simple could... pick off there on the Tiny. Not really the best kill, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, what's important is they get control of this area. Uh, so now, again, uh, Vision up around the Roche pit, and Roche is going to respawn, and then we'll oh, figure out when he respawns. The gem. They're seconds. looking for the real Visage, but it's not going to look too good for them. He's going to get caught out here. Fleet. Blink strike away. J Mari, slide of fist. Oh, beautifully done. He's out. Hmm. Surprise, Ooh. Sunlight's not on the tower? Where did the creep wave go? I guess he just cut the wave. I Never mean, mind. if you. You mean like the tier three? Yeah, I guess he If only you go onto it, yeah. like none of that damage is going to stick. Like you're not going to be able to take it all in one go against the Dream Protector. Uh, so, there's really no point to up there other than like putting himself at unnecessary risk. Like, OD goes in, drops an ash on him, it just sets up the entire team. I mean, he's got go the uh, the frenzy. He can actually throw on catapult here. So yeah, but, he's going to do a decent chunk of damage. They're fighting bottom instead. Rolling Thunder is going to come right. through. Babatich. Nah, he decides exactly better. He's said. just going to leave. He throws frenzy under the catapult. But again, Jamar is here. Yeah. Tower goes down to like half HP, but this is just going to get healed back up to full with the Dream Protector. Yeah. Assuming Dream Predictor sees it, but looks like he's preoccupied with something else right now. Roche ended up being like a 40 second respawn, by the way. So this is where the two teams are going to be hanging out the next like minute here. Poking at each other. They ping it out. Alright, it, it'll be... Fine. I think uh, what you want to try to do on the like is probably just like shove the bottom lane with the wolves or something like that. While you fight around the Roche pit. Try to force somebody back and take a 4v5 engagement. 
yeah I, I think that's pretty much what sunlight's gonna be doing for a while he's got the ac done global hal right now the... since it's nighttime actually i'm just realizing that global hal plus like morphling like if he ends up morphing into the od this hero is gonna have like no damage well i mean he'll still do a decent chunk of damage but he's gonna lose a lot of his damage Speedy rune of hate. smoke up as five dreamers trying to find themselves a pickoff again it's second rosh available so any team that finds these pickoffs will be very happy at the moment they pass the gem on over to jay Mari's. he's got a haste rune and into the high ground they aren't gonna find anything though Good for me. dude they're they are fully aware of this on the side of wild card they know something's up <laughs> Eleven tunics for each each Man, team there. Does not like Dyer's bottom tower and it shows. Oh man, they're all out. I mean, if they're all out, it means that the Roche pit is open. They should definitely go for that. Uh, they do take it a lot slower than Wildcard does, but mm, yeah, OD can take Evermore. it pretty quick. They yeah. have OD Visage, right? I don't think it's that bad. You have Bongo boots. I think you can do it but pretty quick. Not as fast as. Like having the minded armor from Swashbuckle plus like in a morph, like that is yeah, that's true. Very high amounts of damage and Morphling just walked in. No. Yeah, neither team is willing to leave Roshan alone for more than like thirty seconds here. I'm just afraid that the other team's going to grab it. Again, I'm very surprised that we don't see the granite golem just shoving the bottom lane. And it seems like a free tower in this situation. Like, yes, uh, J1 can just TP down there, then revving it back if he has to. But even forcing that out of them, I think would be pretty big. Yeah, that's what's been happening too, like for sure. Like, J Mari's gone down there a couple times to catch the wave, but I agree with you. I think you can just send this golem bottom. And how? I mean, like I said, it, it's a global, so you can slow down these tower pushes or the tower defenses pretty well. And instead, he's just gonna lose the golem in mid here. So another no, 250, 250 gold. Goals. I think that's the third one this game. So that's that's quite a bit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's getting more gold from from these uh, helm dogs than he has from him dying. Yeah, I mean, he has at least, or uh, it's like definitely the fourth one because I saw him lose the centaur as well. So it's probably about a thousand yeah. gold in the overlords. <laughs> A double-edged sword for sure when it comes to this item. Mm -hmm. And the trick is just to grab a new one as the killing the last one, but I guess you can't always be around creeps. The amount of damage this thing does is nuts. 270. Yeah. Things are looking dire for dire yeah. So they're doing what we talked about earlier. They're uh, now finally whacking away at this tier, two, uh, tier 1 tower at the bottom, but will they do this? Adrian is going to get to work on the Rashad. Did they really just stall this out this whole time to wait for day? Yep. It was just daytime, right? That's all they were waiting on? I suppose so. Jamari bottom lane, forced the BKB out of sunlight. He's going to get a decent chunk of damage and trying to disengage, but I think you have to be a little bit careful here on the Ember as well. These creeps do a ton of damage, but looks like he's out of remnants and sunlight. Going to try and TP on out. They got him, though. Slide of Fist does connect, and Lycan... Ow, sniped by the tiny. <laughs> that one hurts. Yeah, it does hurt. Oh. He did get the tower at least, but yeah, that's still pretty rough. The tier one. Yeah, only the tier one. Hmm. Next, uh, tier one is going for a sheep stick, so he wants to be able to get on top of Morphling and beating these team fights, and hopefully, alongside the OD, just be able to burst him down. OD does have a blink dagger. They're himself. waiting for Odie top He's also here. going for a sheep stick. Yeah, they're going to get him. They're going to get at least the Aegis here. Okay. Oh, they will get nothing. That's a big old never mind. <laughs> Quick little TP away. So you yeah. get you get nothing. You get absolutely nothing. He's holding onto the Roche uh, Aghanim shard, which is a little bit bizarre. So the one that allows you to move during Astral. I would have expected him to... Either use that immediately or give it to someone else. Maybe someone dropped it in his inventory and he just hasn't realized it's there yet. Yeah, possibly, possibly. You ever have to do that to your core players? You just have to dress them? Yeah. Flea I've had to do that lane. with neutral items every so often. He's hunting for the Ember Spirit. I don't think he's going to be able to find him, though. TP's out. Yeah, he's gone. Yep. Oh, that's the long are... TP. 
Yeah. Looks like someone else had DP'd to the outpost, the outpost before that. But Ricky wasn't able to find him. He has a top tier one tower. But things have gotten boring, Ricky. I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably the slowest game we've had in uh, the last two days. Yeah. I want action. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for blood. We start two hours late. The people want a show to be put on, okay? They don't want this slow back and forth. Well, they're going to try and trade tier twos here. Fortification is still available for the Dire. I imagine they're just going to fort this and go high ground. They're just going to try and force them back. And that's exactly what they do. Fort for the tier three comes out. Of course, this will refresh in a moment. Sleeping Dart, catch the tree and protector. They're going to know about that ward there. But yeah, Sam claims the bottom tier one tower. They don't really get much of anything except for the fortification. So not too much loss here from wildcard. I'm trying to think like, to what they're waiting for on the side of wildcard. Like, what can they play for at this point in terms of items? You can see the hex queued up. Oh, Hoodwink. Goodbye. Rolling Thunder again uh, from Babatish committed. Yeah, he's going to have dodge with this one. He has no I mean, he's working on his Agatim Scepter. That by itself isn't going to be enough. He definitely needs the Basher after. He's so much control with the Basher eggs. Thank you. Um, until then, I think they're going to struggle to take fight. Sammy's working on Eye of Scotty, which will give him a lot of chase. Uh, it'll make OD's life a lot more difficult as far as trying to get away. Um, but I don't really see Lycan getting any stronger. It's like, this is... It sounds sad, but this is it. Like, <laughs> this is your peak for the rest of your game. It's just like Ooh. the Helm of the Overlord and uh, the Assault Cross. Four staff after four staff. They do finally get the Tiny out of the base. Nice to know. Everyone's going to be scaling harder than the Lycan is, unfortunately. He's got his BKB now, at least. So there's that. Yep. And they're going to find his Ancient Creep once again. So that is another 250 gold. This one going into the pocket of Drakeel. Yeah. I wonder what he's saving for. He's got an AC queued up. And Jamari, get... what is he going to buy? He's got 4,000 gold. That's a Scythe finished on Adrian as well. So Blink Scythe is online. They're smoked up on the side of Wild Card. If they don't get the initiation, they're in so much trouble. They're gonna do it. They actually do find it here onto the Vistas. The Bushwhack does come through, but a nice OD Astral to give him some space. The BKB comes out from the OD, but he's gotta get away from this Morphling for the moment. And Drakeel still managing to survive. Pops the BKB, pops the Stone Forge. Sammy up onto the high ground, trying to take down Adrian, but another defensive Astral. Sam will turn around with his own set of Astrals. There it is. The Steady Eclipse doing almost nothing thanks to the damage reduction. But Sammy has to wait for him away as the chase is going to continue. Drakeel, he's got another four. <laughs> he's got another catch. A hex comes out. And the OD will find that kill. Four for basically nothing. You get an Aegis out of this. Yeah, but outside of Sammy, no one was able to put in any damage. Ricky doesn't do anything. Pango barely did anything there as well. 6,300 from Sammy and no one else could put in anything. This is a rough game now and... I think it's was over. a rough game now. You I have no more fling buyback. It's gonna be it's gonna be two lanes of barracks for sure. Drakeel yeah. was not even here for the first one, but uh, yeah. he's gonna show up top now. All right, there. Oh yeah, they have second fort. With Pango Where coming up in three seconds. Wrong? Well, with Pango coming up okay. in three seconds, they might actually back off. I don't think they will. Well, that uh, never mind. Instead, they do the opposite. They dive into the base. The hex comes out. Where Adrian. did it all go wrong? Let's go back to the question. Uh, well, I think uh, there's a lot that went wrong this game for Wildcard. I mean, I, I feel like the Lycan was a decent pick. It did allow you to get these early towers. Uh, the Morphling was able to put damage in these team fights, but I don't think your supports did enough this game. And Ember Spirit, despite the fact that he tilted out of control and died twice in the top lane, had way too much of a recovery. So. I think a lot of this game is actually on Babbitage, to be honest. I don't think the Pango really did anything this game. And I, he definitely needed to have a really good game. Drakeel will go down. Actually managed to find at least one kill. But uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get Jamari. He's got a no side. He's for another two seconds. There we go. He's got it now. Um, 
Yeah, as you say, I don't think Pango did much of anything in this game. He's got like no net worth to his name. He's not even remotely close to his Ags now after those two deaths. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, you needed to, he basically him and Flea had to play the mid game. And I just feel like they didn't do that at all. Yep. Uh, by the way, Tower did it go up. Yeah, Tower went down tier three up in the top lane. <laughs> Wow. So the tree and protector was not paying attention. The catapult managed to take that one and uh, did a decent chunk of damage down to the bottom tier three as well. What can you do? You're so focused. I mean, you were basically like closing out the game there. These things tend to get ignored. It's like you're ending. You can't focus on everything all the time. I'm not sure if you saw it in that fight, but it was actually really funny. Like the OD uh, got howled and Morph uh, like hit the OD as well. And Morph, like, mm -hmm. threw a double Astral, went from 1,700 mana to 2,600 mana. And he dropped mm -hmm. San Eclipse. It did, like, 150 damage to the Morph, like. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the idea behind it. The Agony of Scepter will reduce a lot of the damage the OD does. And, uh, yeah, he basically had less, like, OD had less mana than the Morphling did. It was really funny. Yeah. Because you have all the same abilities at that point. Uh, so you have all the, the mana that the OD would have. Plus you have, like, I Scotty and shit. Oh yeah, double astral too. Funny. So he he yeah. stole like twenty two percent mana from two heroes. And and the what? I think he took like twenty percent of the twenty percent of their all stats too. Yeah. So he, yeah, that's hey, okay. forty agility from or forty int from the OD as well. And the spell amp. And the spell amp. Yeah. So like OD it was just like uh, like dumb boy. Yeah. That's an interesting counter, though, OD, because a lot of times people pick this OD in the Morphling intentionally, which makes sense. Like, it's, it's, it depends. Like, once you get Blink Hex, it's really hard for the Morphling to play. And as we see right now, like, it's hard for everyone on Wildcard to play. And they are just super far behind. But uh, the Aghanim Scepter, pretty decent answer to the OD. Yeah. It's a shame that it didn't work out like this. I don't know. I feel like there were more problems than just gravitation on uh, the Pango. I mean, yes, she didn't have the best game, but... I mean, 5-2 and 5, it's not like he fed or anything like that. Yeah. yeah I feel and like Wildcard just players. were not on the same page. Like, they weren't making plays. Uh, and this is my issue with the current iteration of their roster. Like, it's feast or famine. It is so inconsistent. Some days they just like pop off. Other times, things will kind of fall apart for them. Bottom lane, Jamari. Dart's gonna connect. They've got the follow-up stuns. The question is, can they actually blow him up? No, not in time. Just pops the BKB and he's out. There's just not enough stuns. Like with this lineup, that like you have Hoodwink's Bushwhack and Rolling Thunder. That is all of your stuns and you're against, you know, Ember Spirit. Like, it is so hard. You need a Scythe of Ice like, ASAP. Not like Dyer's bottom tower and it shows. But I don't know who can buy it. Oh, it is going to be the Lycan. Lycan's buying the Scythe. That makes sense. Things are looking you're playing against Tooth Scythe yourself, top. though. Yeah. Oh, they're going to catch Visage. Oh, dude, the Blast Rig ends up absorbing so much of the damage and Drakeel's gonna get the stone form off. Rolling Thunder to the backside does catch the OD as well as the Tiny. This fight's looking pretty good for the side of Dreamers, but J Mari's just now joining the fray. Hex will catch the Pango and on the high ground, the Hex will catch the Morphling. He needs to get this Morph off. Oh, he did. He's gonna turn out with the BKB. He's looking for his targets. He's got one Astral and a second. He needs to be able to wait for away. Ends up getting the gem. He's gone. I don't think he's gone. Uh... He's got that uh, Trickster's Cloak. He might be fine. Dude, yeah, look at the mana difference. 2,900 mana on Morphling versus 1,900 mana on OD. <laughs> he has so much in. Okay, they do manage to get away. They're hanging around the pit for so long right now. This ended up being nearly a max grocery spot. It was like 2 minutes and 58 seconds or something. Yeah. So it is wasting time here. At the very least, they control the map and Wildcard doesn't get anything from this, but... I'm surprised that uh, Dreamers is playing this one so safe. I mean, I feel like Wildcard right now good. are kind of oh. strong. You know, Don't sometimes. Don't you ever speak to me again. <laughs> sometimes. Don't you ever. Hey, stop. man. Don't say a word. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why do they got to do me like that? <laughs> uh.
They did recover their gem, Copium. Top lane, they have another BKB still available here for Ember. They managed to blow him up this time. It just required the whole team. That was the difference. So Ember yep. Spirit being dead, Roshan up in 10 seconds. This could be big, tiny, inside the pit, four staff to safety. Flea goes in, throws the dart, but he is under a, a sentry here and he needs to get out. Huge overgrowth, man, catching four, instantly dispelled though, as he just blows up the tree protector. That's a nice kill, Drakeel with the BKB already pops Sammy. He's gotta get the morph. Astral does come out holding him in place, but again, Sammy's got the BKB. He's gonna turn himself into the Tiny instead. He's just gonna start laying into these heroes one by one, jumps over to the Visage. He's got a toss, but gets hexed instead. Nice bushwhack there from Vel, keeping him alive. And the drops one by one, another Astral from the OD. There is no Sammy's Eclipse, but stolen it. All right, Avalanche toss into the Hex. They got the Bush, or I'm sorry, the Sharpshooter as well onto the OD, the four staffs away. Up onto the high he ground, did. Sunlight's gonna chase, but he doesn't have detection. A defensive Astral will keep him alive. On the front side of the fight, Tiny and Morphling having a little bit of fun here inside of the Roche, but they finally claim the kill. You get out on the OD, but they're gonna get the Roche now. Yeah, unfortunately, your tier fours are currently taking damage inside your base. It's dropping down to like 50% to HP while that fight went down. It gives all they managed to take this. They couldn't get the OD like you mentioned, though. And he is, I think, the prize hero at the moment. They uh, lost both gems. Like, Five has bought two gems this game, and they're both on Sunlight now. Yeah. Opening that fight and getting uh, the Ember Spirit was definitely necessary to any of that happening because these fights are so drawn out. Like this Ember Spirit gives off so many side of fists in these team fights. Yeah, it plus is the insane. remnant damage, dude. And that second yeah. X, there's just, he's all, he, he's damage and utility. Like he does a lot. Yeah, but if you can get a uh, jump on him and blow him up, like you do have the damage to do so. And I think uh, it only gets easier for you from here on. Now, actually, I think Sammy might start to run the damage problems. At this point in the game, like 43 minutes, you usually expect to see like a big item like Daedalus on a Morphling. We see how long he's hitting people while they're disabled and they're just not dying. Yeah, he does get his level 25 here. So waveform cooldown, most likely, I would guess. I don't think he needs the strength, right? Yeah, waveform cooldown is now up. Uh, OD closing on his level 25, which that's a hard one, actually. The Sanity's Eclipse damage this game, I think, is a bait because of the Morphling. So maybe he'll take the Arcane Orb damage. I mean, both of these are hard to deal with because of the Morphling. Like, both of these talents get actually owned if the Morphling morphs into them. It was 2%, though. 16 to 18. I feel like it's kind of negligible compared to a lot of other 25 talents. He's going to do it. Arcane Orb damage. I mean, 18% yeah. of your mana as pure damage is pretty good. Mm hmm but again, this is one of those things where he needs to build up the Astrals, but if you're getting morphed then you just lose 20% of your stats and he Astrals you, you're going to go from having like 3k, like 2,500 mana down to like 1,600 and suddenly you're just not doing the damage. Crazy or does this OD hero feel like it does a lot, or it's got a lot less mana than it used to. Yeah. Oh, that's because Essence Flux changed. Yeah, they changed a lot of his spells. And it literally has less mana than it used to. I'm getting old. I can't remember the patches anymore. I can't remember what used to be in the game and what is currently in the game. Well, it's time for me to give her a place with E.T., man. Just tell me when. <laughs> just give me the green light, my friend. <laughs> So I'm just send you out to the pasture or send you down to the field with a target on your back no, bro, I'll, <laughs> I'll take you out to the ranch dude it'll be fine uh, thanks buddy Babbitage finally level 20 on this pango he is just so far behind getting the swashbuckle damage shard mid lane he's gonna catch the tiny that's a decent pick off he does have the four staff save but Adrian with a nice blink on out they're looking for more the OD would be a great find the BKB unable to get popped for the moment they do have the detection there with Babbage. That's going to be the refresher. They continue to go. The Lincoln's protecting Sam. Adrian's going to go down. That's a nice pickoff, and he's going to buy back right into the game as they've managed to find the Visage as well. His BKB is available. Going to pop the stone for him. And so he's going to lose those first birds. OD comes in. It's finally his turn to fight a big avalanche. Jmari doing work as well. There's the Sanity's baby. Three dead for Adrian. And now Sammy all alone with an A, just gonna try and TP on home. They've got the vision though. Good luck, son. 
It's looking rough now. Wait a minute. Okay, He's they've got, got a dust. <laughs> waveform. They got him. Age is number one. CKB in. He has waveform. Hexed up. Oh. Lincolns was not there to protect him. That is. That might be the uh, the end of the the old game there, as it is a five for two. You get the buyback on this OD. I think it's a. I think you have to be morphing the OD in these games. Like I actually don't know how you don't. Seven thousand damage almost. They did exactly what they should have in that team fight. They took out everybody other than the moral thing. You just able to like five v one him. They're sorry, four v one him at the tail end of it too. He was going for the Daedalus, like we mentioned after the Agon and blessing, but. There was no way he was escaping from that one at the end without the VKV preemptively in his inventory. Uh, but unfortunate for Wildcard there. And this is going to be the last set of racks. They are not equipped to deal with Mega Creeps. Not really, yeah. They have double buybacks here, but without the Morphling, it's going to be very difficult. Buyback also available here on Flea, but they just drop Ward Sentry back behind the tower. The instant jump into the Hex. Again, his buybacks available, but onto the Tier 4s we go. As he's going to just throw that remnant in the base to break the blink daggers. Oh my gosh, Babatich ruined his rolling thunder. Oh no. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you mess up the rolling thunder and they just ignore him as they turn their attention back on over to Flea. He's going to go down and game one in the bag here for Dreamers. Looking a lot better than they did uh, yesterday. Some moments where I was questioning them, like uh, there's jumps up to the top lane by uh, J1, but... He did start to look better after that. 12-3 uh, and 19 is not a bad score to end the game on. Uh, we'll see if Wildcard can pull this back in game number two. Uh, again, I, I think this more so comes down to what they were able to do with their heroes in the draft rather than uh, a skill difference between these two teams. I think the Wildcard is more than capable of uh, winning against Dreamers here. They just need to pick things a little bit more consistent in team fights and maybe go for things that can fight earlier on. I mean, like, I think they doesn't contribute too much at the beginning and Lycan is kind of doing his own thing at the beginning as well. Yeah, I, was saying, I think they actually had very they had a real potential to win this game. Like, I don't think this was at all like out of control for them. Um, mm -hmm. After that, like good fight bottom, they get the eight or at the near the Roshan, they get Aegis and everything. I think the game was actually kind of in their favor, but just some rough execution in that final fight. Um, so we're going to go to a short break, everyone. We'll be back with game number two. It is, again, Dreamers here taking on a wild card. This is the BTS Pro Series Season 14. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a bit.